tax fairy savages are coming from foreign countries and coming in doing horrible things to the people of Syria. Um, organizing this tour and showing us the reality in Damascus and here in Latakia. The delegation of the international peace advocates to say the Syrians represent the national sense. The delegation of the international peace advocates declared that they hope that Syria's neighboring states stop supporting violence so peace could prevail instead of terrorism. The Syrian Arab army demolished terrorists' dens in Al Mleha, finding a number of tunnels and arresting a gang stealing oil in Palmyra. Good afternoon, welcome to our news bulletin. I'm Dania Nizam. In Latakia, the visiting delegation of international peace advocates asserted that Syrians present a real example of the national feeling. The international delegation also called on the governments of certain neighboring countries to stop supporting violence in Syria. A delegation of several nationalities in the world has come to Syria. The members are Iranian, British, American, Irish, Nigerian, Australian, Pakistanian, German, Indian and Canadian. Their message is peace for Syria and their main purpose of the trip is to convey the true image of what is really going on in Syria. This image which has been prevented to reach to the public opinion and it has been replaced by a false one that given to the world by politicized channels, some of them are religious takfiri extremist ones, while the others are delusive fake and bought by the enemies of Syria and its resistant line. The mayor of Latakia welcomed the delegation of peace supporters. He accompanied its members to the Armenian church and martyrs cemetery in which the martyrs of the Syrian Arab army and innocent civilian martyrs of the northern countryside of Latakia were buried. After that station the delegation went to the shelter centers and listened to refugees about the crimes that had been exposed to by the Takfiri armed groups. This solidarity is a human one and it targets the religious side through praying for Syria and the Syrian people that is forgotten by the world. This civilian people is stripped of its rights. And there are new Berbers who enter Syria from all its boundaries. They interfere and hurt the safe Syrian people. The participants in this delegation are of several nationalities. It's true that the Iranian participant is very important. They are so careful about the Syrian people. We really appreciate their support. From different parts of the world, they come to say that peoples have feelings and love to the Syrian people. They come to say we are not satisfied with the politics of our countries towards yours. I, I used to bring groups to Syria and it was always a place of tolerance, welcome and togetherness for people of different communities and faiths. I think that the situation in Syria has been misrepresented internationally and that is one of the reasons I am here to come and listen to people to see the situation and it is tragic to see this country which has been so ripped apart but I do not believe it's been ripped apart by the, by, by the Syrian people and um, we come to speak of uh, uh, solidarity and, and love and desire for peace amongst all the people of this land and to recognize that that is the true, real desire of people of Syria. Well, we're standing in an Armenian church at the moment. We have listened to beautiful music inside the church and there are Armenian women inside that church crying right now. And the question is, why are those people crying? And the answer is because these Takfiri savages are coming from foreign countries and coming in doing horrible things to the people of Syria that they're so horrible, I prefer not to 
discuss them too much. We are here to show that those people should not be crying and the Armenian people and the rest of the people of Syria should be living in peace and the Takfiri savages should go home. I sincerely say that what I have I've seen in a couple of days here in Syria, my mind has opened. And uh, when I go back to my country, hopefully I'll give the message of peace to everybody back home. The purpose of this visit here is uh, yeah, that we get first-hand information of what's going on in, in Syria and you know how the situation is, how, how the refugees are living, how the people are living. I mean, I've been here uh, a couple of times, so for me it's not the first time to see. Uh, I think I'm pretty much aware of the situation. Uh, it's very impressive to see all the people, to see the children, to see the refugees and how strongly they feel. Um, it's clear they want to return home. And part of the, our reason for coming is to see the situation and go back home and demand our government to change its policy of supporting the terrorism. Uh, coming here, we've been working in the Syria Solidarity Movement for over a year and a half. Uh, we organized the tour of North America by Mother Agnes Miriam. And uh, we have a website that provides more accurate information, but coming and seeing it with our own eyes is very important and so we are very thankful for the people who are um, organizing this tour and showing us the reality in Damascus and here in Latakia. Uh, oh. You know that uh, Syrian channels, uh, national Syrian channels are prevented from uh, reaching the world. Uh, what do you see or do, uh, sorry what do you say about this uh, situation because we can't we can't uh, convey the image of yeah. uh, the real situation in Syria yeah that, you're absolutely right there's a censorship so the hypocrisy of the West is very clear uh, they talk about freedom and democracy but they're censoring information from Syria and even if you Google incidents that happen in Syria uh, the information provided by Syrian um, news agencies is blocked, we're censored. So that's why it's so important that we have people come here and then come back and tell our own, uh, tell the, the public in the United States and Canada. In Damascus, the delegation from the International Peace Activists Group met Grand Mufti of the Republic, Ahmed Badreddin Hassoun, Minister of Tourism, Bishr Yazaji, and Greek Catholic Patriarch Gregorius III, Laham of Antioch and all the East. Grand Mufti Ahmed Badreddin Hassoun hailed the unity of the Syrian people, army and leadership after three years of the global unjust war against Syria. The Grand Mufti called on the delegation to convey the true image of what is going on in Syria to the whole world, which is still lying as it sometimes says there is a sectarian war in Syria and sometimes it says there is a revolution. Mufti Hassoun briefed the delegation on the fact that the terrorist groups came to Syria from 83 countries to kill the Syrians, destroy their homeland, take their salaries from Arab, taking their salaries from Arab and foreign countries. For his part, Minister of Tourism Bishri Azaji wondered about the world's silence towards the terrorists' attacks aimed at destroying the cultural heritage in Syria. Yazaji called for supporting the Syrian army as the genuine peacemaker who sacrifices itself for defending the whole world against terrorism. In a relevant context, Patriarch Laham stressed the importance of the visit, pointing out that the future of Syria determines the future of the world, hailing Syrian people's steadfastness and aspiration to rebuild Syria, land of peace and love. For their part, members of the delegation stress that their visit to Syria aims at getting acquainted with the truth of what's going on to convey the true image to the Western media. In Homs, the delegation of the International Peace Advocates has visited the two sites of the terrorist explosions in Haikar Meloz, gave condolences to the martyrs' families and met families of martyrs and the kidnapped.
Ukrainian Arab army units killed many terrorists and injured others in Al-Mleha of Damascus countryside. The Syrian Arab army units clashed with several terrorist groups, some of them from the so-called Battalion of Al-Habib Al-Mustafa at the northern entrance of Al-Mleha and in the surrounding farms, as well as on the axis of Tamika Pharmaceutical Company, killing many terrorists, injuring others and destroying their weapons and ammunition. In the same area, Syrian Arab army units found many tunnels which were used by the terrorists for movement and for transporting weapons. In Renkus, Syrian Arab army units maintained control on a series of eastern hills including Ratsfahonet al Hawa that overlook the valleys of Renkus and Al-Qalamun of Damascus countryside. During their operation, Syrian Arab army units destroyed the hideouts of the terrorist groups in Renkus and al Mahabba villages, killing many terrorists and destroying their weapons and ammunition. In Hama countryside, two citizens were killed and more than 100 others injured in Kafr Zeta as terrorists from Jabhat al-Nusra targeted the residents of the village by poisonous chlorine gas. Jabhat al-Nusra is preparing to carry out other chemical attacks in different areas in the country. Increasing authentic international reports confirm the terrorists' responsibility for the previous poison attacks in Syria. In an article published in the independent newspaper, Patrick Cockburn has said that American Secretary of State John Kerry and the U.S. Ambassador at the U.N. Samantha Power were exercising pressures to supply the terrorists with more arms and logistic aid, despite the substantiated evidence that those terrorists adopt the same ideology of that of Al-Qaeda. Cockburn further said that the last attack waged by the terrorists on Latakia's northern countryside was under the command of Chechen and Moroccan jihadists fighting in Syria. He concluded this article by saying that the U.S. had done all it could to keep its role in supplying the terrorists in Syria with arms secret through using agents and illustry companies. The American V-Trust Today newspaper has published an article entitled The American Contractors, written by Jeffrey Silverman, who disclosed the U.S.'s and Turkey's involvement in the chemical attack in Syria. Silverman added that a video was circulated earlier showing how sarin agent was transferred from an American laboratory in Georgia to Syria via Turkey and that the former American Senator Richard Logar facilitated this operation backed by Washington and Ankara. In Palmyra, in Homs countryside, the concerned bodies detained a terrorist group which was stealing the crude oil through a truck, then linking it to the main oil line between Palmyra and Homs. Within the framework of an activity entitled The Ones Who Achieved Independence Are Able to Achieve Victory, which was held by the Ministry of Culture, Syrian artists and painters started preparations for the anniversary of the Independence Day in Damascus Castle. The artists and the sculptors started their work in an art gathering which included oil paintings, carvings and sculptures depicting the steadfastness of the Syrians, their love for life and their sacrifices made for the sake of their beloved country. The pieces of art reflect the creativity of the Syrian artists and the rich cultural heritage in the country. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region, you can always view this bulletin again on syriaonline.sy. It's over after the break to our latest and economic news with Vani. God bless you and long live Syria. <laughs>